The following story was told by Kat, a writer and mental health advocate from Mental Health Connecticut's Write On program. This story is raw, personal, and may contain language not suitable for younger listeners. So I'm here to express how, really, the mental health care system, it kind of sucks. I mean, there's a lot of good parts to it, don't get me wrong, but it does isolate people, and it only adds to their shame and all the stigma. So I'm going to ask you guys just to imagine one thing, first of all. Imagine being in prison. You're surrounded by others, plenty of other prisoners, yet you're ironically more lonely than ever before. And maybe that's half the punishment. If you ever felt lonely, I mean, here's your chance. You got hundreds, thousands of potential friends all around. Just don't forget, your soul, it will be gnawed at and chewed. Not very nice, but I mean, you're in prison. It's what you deserve, right? So, that also means your basic human rights are disrespected. Common sense is always thrown out the window. No matter what happens, you're the scapegoat. And altogether, it encapsulates your soul into a dark pit of isolation. Let's call it the pit of the plum. So I'm going to express my experience with prison, or so to say, my pit of the plum. That is, the fruitful creation of not only misfortunate events and a lot of my own bullshit, but also the misinformed ways of the mental health care system. Now listen, I've never been the ripest fruit of the bunch. Some days I'm pretty sure the earth is shaking upon me waking up. I'm not kidding, really. It's like, grace yourself, big world. This sarcastic ray of sunshine is waking up. Please, please brace yourself. Sorry guys, it's just in my nature this melodramatic, deep, dark, twisted self. Although, add on abandonment and neglect, abuse, trauma, eating disorders, loss to suicide, is it really a surprise I meandered my way back to living in my mom's basement at 24 with a fuckload of mental diagnoses, history of addiction, being unemployed, out of school? So there I was, at 24, in my mom's basement. Little Miss Crazy, deserving of prison, I suppose. But I was, I was all set up, ready to go, ready to recover. And so I went into it. I attended an intensive outpatient group therapy, complied to take prescribed medications, attended meetings, cut out all those people, places, and things that they say will trigger or not be good for you to be near. And I mean, it was great. It really was. Most people, they were all looking at me, like, smiling, like, wow, way to go. You're doing great. You're so much better. Surprisingly enough, while they were smiling and happy for me, I could not smile myself. Forcing a smile, it only pinched my heart. As I knew, I very well knew, I could not share their sense of joy. I was becoming increasingly miserable. The musty basement and the reign of power those medications had over my life. It was the prison my family and professionals had oh so caringly locked me into. And don't get me wrong, I know they cared. They did. But the thing is, they didn't understand. And even this alone, it wasn't the only problem. This was only the portion of the pain that got me into a downward spiral to a numbing depression. In my moments of despair and pinching heartache, I could not even comprehend living this way, nor living at all. What was the point of living if I'm just this stigmatized, disrespected problem to the world? And I mean, I had so much potential. I went to college for health sciences. I had so much compassion to help others, so much desire to learn. All in all, I had so much to offer the world. So why then? Why would I even bother sticking around if I can't even harness these things? That very little sense of purpose and confidence I remotely had, it just vanished. The agony of being told, like, you need 
to be an isolated waste of space in order to come alive again. It just didn't make sense to me. In fact, I thought it was an oxymoron. I was encouraged to get my life back by having what makes one's life totally stripped away. And so, back in my mom's basement, my logic behind contemplating death was this. If the very unique nature of what makes me, me, is being disrespected and held down by an upper hand, then screw it. Why not die? How much longer can I live like this? When is enough enough? And how can these people audaciously say that they see my life coming back together when I'm not even living at all? Is it really any wonder that within a month, I only went crazier? Here's why. The social isolation, it was offsetting any help that any sort of therapy and pills could ever provide. It was no longer a struggle to battle my demons or stabilize brain chemistry. The bigger issue was the increasing isolation. What I do know for certain is this. I know the pain, the pain that comes out of social isolation. We're social beings, right? It's this kind of isolation that undeniably killed my spirit. Wouldn't it kill yours too? If you had no one to talk to, no one to vent to that actually knows you, and whether they even understand they'll still sit there and be your friend, how about having not a single soul around to even utter a mere laugh with? And I had no joy either. Likewise, wouldn't you think that as I'm getting better, joy would be coming back into my life? The thing is, again, I wasn't doing anything with my life, but recovering. Apparently my life was recovery, that I had to have no life in order to recover my life. I guess that's how the system works. Can't you imagine how good it felt to feel healthier, have my mind be more clear, my body moving again? How the difference of contrast from where I was and where I am now had felt like night and day. Just think how I desperately yearned to see my best friend again, to be gym buddies, to gossip, to just do stupid shit, have a friend, be normal. So I have this sensory memory. It's a sense of suffocation from isolation. It's the pain that sucks your heart from the inside out because it's gasping to breathe, but the air just won't give. And the ultimate problem, it was a simple problem. I was alone. Though appearing to have stabilized, I was only on my way to another mental implosion. All I wanted to do was go see a movie, see my friend, go on a hike. I mean, just go on a goddamn date, like something. It's all I wanted, it's all I needed. But instead, I had to be in recovery and not do anything, because that's apparently what recovery is, isolation. I had my group therapy, and I had a safe, cozy basement to hold my agonies, along with a buttload of pills. Apparently, everyone but me knew what I wanted and needed. And I myself wanting to be that professional someday I said, you know what, screw it, I'll listen to the pros. They must know what they're talking about, right? So soon enough, I broke down to a hell of total chaos, irrationality, desperation, impulsivity. This is what the mental implosion is. The actions, the thoughts, nothing made sense. And I knew it didn't. I knew very well it didn't. But I knew that my spirit it was coming out of my skin, and it had absolutely nothing to tame how it played out. So the mental health care system, it has come a long way. I will give it that. I support both its good intentions and many of its therapeutic methods, including its curriculum, too. I really do. I share my story here to express where the mental health system is misinformed, it's uninformed and very incomplete. 
In other words, I'm here to identify and express where more work needs to be done. And first and foremost, the stigma, the stigma needs to go. Inside and outside of the system, just as the isolating symptom of treatment needs to go. In other words, the system needs to be rethought, it needs to become more patient-centered, more focused on individuals to discover what their real interests and needs are so that more individualized plans can be made. And so that we're not just treated like numbers or those crazies, because all the crazies are all the same. So yeah, the traditional model of treatment, it has this unfortunate result of social isolation that is equally lethal to the spirit than any illness, addiction, or troubles could ever be. My sense of jail, it needed no actual crime or arrest. My sense of jail, it demonstrated that anyone and everyone in serious emotional distress, they need not judgments and seclusion, but rather company, involvement, overall connections to life greater than the so-called treatment. It showed me that people as a whole, whether crazy, addicted, or even like those normal people, like everybody, all needs an active life of having social connections in order to sustain their sanity, really. I'm just, I'm genuinely sad that our system has come to the point of taking away our confidence and power by means of seclusion. What I learned is that you just can't shame and isolate a person into sanity. Just can't. Kat's story was recorded in front of a live audience at CT Improv's Theater in Hartford, Connecticut. Want to hear more young adults find their voice and speak their truth? Go to mhconn.org slash write on. That's W-R-I-T-E-O-N.